Helicopter parent. Helicopter parent. A parent who takes an overprotective or excessive interest in the life of their child. Always hovering. I'm Larry Fedorik, and this is Later That Same Life. New episodes of my podcast pop every Thursday, wherever you get your podcast, and on my YouTube channel. You can also share your feedback. My Gmail is coming up at the end of the episode. On this weekly podcast, topics, discussions, stories from our lives. Season 9, Chapter 8. Free Range Kids. Today's podcast inspired by the book Free Range Kids by Lenore Skenazy, whose advocacy has shone a spotlight on our parenting. More on this in a moment. But first, almost everyone around my age has pretty much the same story about growing up. It goes, you know, when I was a kid, I'd leave the house in the morning and I wasn't expected home till dinner. Is that true? Well... Yes, I do think that happened a lot. It's not just one of those exaggerated memories we all have of our past. (laughs) There are generations of people alive today who, as children, were left to their own devices. Long before helicopter parenting, kids weren't just allowed to be kids. It was expected of us. It was our job. Go out and play. Get out of my hair. And you're sitting at the kids' table. Kids and adults were two completely separate social groups, the intermingling of which was held to a minimum. Parents were not being emotionally neglectful. They were just busy being adults. And you, mister, you better get busy being a kid. Mom, I'm bored. Then go do something. There's nothing to do. Then find something to do. Oh, yes, all right, Mom. Good job description there. Yes, yes. Excellent mission statement. Understood. I'm just a kid, but it's up to me to amuse myself. At the very beginning of the post-World War II baby boom, noted American pediatrician Dr. Benjamin Spock published his book, Baby and Child Care. 1946. It sold a half a million copies in its first six months, 50 million copies in the following six decades. It was the Bible of child care, referred to sometimes as the instructions, how to assemble a child. Dr. Spock's famous quote and general philosophy was, feed them, love them, and leave them alone. I'm not saying all parents read the book or followed his credo. Some parents, I'm sure, were just uh, absent and lazy. But it was the general practice. Feed them, love them, and leave them alone. I was literally on my own as a kid almost every non-school day. There was some general information that my parents required, but no TMI. Hey, I'm just going out to play baseball. I'm biking out to the lake. I'm going to play at Philip's house. Okay, be home in time for dinner. And how, other than hunger, did we know it was time for dinner? Peter Kenner. Peter Kenner had to be home for dinner for 6 o'clock. His mom had a whistle. A shrill sports whistle. You could hear that thing all over town. At 20 minutes to 6... She stood on their stoop and blew the whistle three long and loud times. Even if we weren't playing with Peter, we knew that somewhere Peter had to be home. So we figured, well, we all probably had to be home also. Okay, see you later. You know, if the Kenners were out of town on vacation, many times most of us kids would be late for dinner. You know, actually, a quick correction, I didn't actually eat dinner until well into my 20s. As a kid, we had supper. So how did we get from those carefree times to an age of helicopter parents? I think it started fairly innocently. Like any parent, you want a better life for your kid than you had. 
regardless of how bad or good you had it. Your lofty goal, my kid, will have it better than I did. And even when you suddenly hit that day where you said to yourself out loud, oh my God, I've become my parents, you continued to work to achieve improvement. Before we knew it, we were hovering around our toddlers at the playground. My kid is not going to fall and scrape a knee. We began helping our kids with their homework and school projects. My kid is going to get an A. We not only signed our kids up for soccer, we took them there to practice and games. And we stayed cheering them on from the sidelines, making sure the referee was fair. We organized all the other parents to make sure we knew whose turn it was to bring drinks and snacks. My kid is not going to get dehydrated or even a little peckish. Not only did we sign our kids up for soccer, but hockey, baseball, dance, piano, scouts, guides, the chess club. We drive them here, we drive them there. We go to every parent-teacher meeting, we go to every recital, every game. I'm going to be there for my kid. Probably didn't even ask your kid if they wanted you there. When I was a kid, sports was a way for me to take a break from my parents and them to get a break from me. Not today. Everything a kid does has to be some sort of family activity. Why? And then we began to believe that the world was becoming a more dangerous place. We were egged on by negative media stories of missing and abducted children. So your child then had to be under constant adult supervision. Hey, you heard that story about that little girl? She was just coming home from school. Oh no, it's not going to happen to my kid. These supervision codes were then written into law. Child protection groups sprang up. Neighborhood watches, amber alerts, parents ratting out other parents. Our hearts may be in the right place, but were we making the world safer for our children or just making them more fearful? And helicopter parenting just feeds on itself and grows. You know, if parents are super attentive to their kids, and you do any less than that, well, what kind of mom or dad are you? You have to match their dedication, or else be ostracized, reported to Child Protection Services. Compare this to when I was a kid. If I thought Bobby had it better at his house than I did, and I brought this up to my parents, what do you think they said? That's right. Well, maybe you'd like to go live at Bobby's house. Maybe I will. Okay, go ahead. I'll do it. Yes, I know. I'm going. See ya. After a generation or so of this helicopter parenting, we are only beginning to understand the negative outcomes. We spent so much time and energy to make sure that our kids didn't get hurt and didn't fail that we now have an entire population of adults who don't know what to do when they get hurt or fail. What happens when suddenly dad is not there to watch you climb up the slide ladder? Or mom isn't there to help you with your homework? Did we raise children who know how to be self-reliant? Who have experiences to draw from when the going gets tough? And remember, it's not whether or not you will fail, because you will fail. It's about what you do once that happens. How quickly do you get back up? And what's your plan of action? And are you mentally prepared to possibly fail again? To re-emphasize, I don't think all of this was intentional, that we purposely set out to have our kids unprepared, but all of this hovering may have been to our children's detriment. How are these overprotected kids doing now as adults? How are their coping skills, their problem solving, their creative thinking? Survey said, not good. Helicopter children are plagued by anxiety, depression, fear. You know, governments list our children as dependents, which means once they leave the nest, they are to be independents. Oh sure, we all still call mums and pops for advice. We may have to borrow from the bank of mom and dad occasionally, but that's different from being immobilized without them around. This is a good time to get to Lenore Skenazy author of the book, Free Range Kids, How Parents and Teachers Can Let Go and Let Grow. She co-founded and is president of a group called Let Grow, and her website about effective modern-day parenting is called freerangekids.com. 
as a New York City newspaper columnist in 2008, she wrote a controversial article entitled, Why I Let My Nine-Year-Old Ride the Subway Alone. This is New York City. In the piece, she chronicled how her son had been nagging her to let him do stuff on his own. He'd been doing this for months, nine years old. One day at a downtown department store, mom had to get going, but he didn't want to leave yet. So she gave him a transit map, transit pass, a $20 bill, and some quarters in case he had to make a call. For several reasons, he did not have a cell phone. She went on to say that she trusted him to figure out what subway and bus to take to get home, and that if he had to ask someone for directions, she trusted a stranger not to abandon whatever plans he had and decide to abduct the young boy. She didn't tail him. She went home, made sure that she was near the phone, and uh, did worry a bit. Then the son came home in a few hours, ecstatic ecstatic at his own independence. The article got national attention. This was 2008. And Lenore Scanese was dubbed <laughs> World's Worst Mom. To this day, if you Google World's Worst Mom, her name is near or at the top of most searches. As I said, she has taken on this concept of free-range parenting and free-range kids as her main career and focus, her life's work, pointing out how fearful society has become and how many of us think nothing of passing these fears onto our children. She hears from children, tweens and young teens, who have never used the stove, a sharp knife, or walk their dog alone down their block because their parents have never let them. She hears from parents with experiences like one mom who was in the house while her kids played in the front yard. A neighbor saw unsupervised children called police who then called Child Protection Services. They all showed up in the house and had to fill in an extensive report. Worse, another mom was actually sitting on her front steps while her kids played in the front yard, but she was reading a book. A passerby yelled at her, Put down that book! Don't you realize someone could just snatch your kids up in a second? As Lenore Skenazy has said, and I'm paraphrasing, you really can't constantly organize your life around the worst case scenario. What if, what if, what if? I know, I know. People say, better be safe than sorry. But somehow, this is morphed into better be ridiculous and fearful than sorry. Certainly, yes, you treat your babies with care. But you don't treat your children like babies. Free-range parenting is not about letting your kids do anything they want. We still have to be responsible adults. No one is saying, hey, teach your kid to swim by throwing them off the dock. You can be a free-range parent and still require your kid to wear a bicycle helmet, still limit their screen access, enforce a bedtime. As part of Skenazy's Let Grow program, they also work with schools to encourage independence. I mean, free-ranging at home is great, but if you're the only parent doing it, one idea that they use is a homework assignment for grades K through 12, where a child gets an actual homework assignment. Do one thing on your own, without your parents, and report back on it. Now, this could be anything. Walk the dog on your own. Use that sharp knife. Read a book of your own choosing. Here's what one fifth grader wanted to do. He wanted to walk a few blocks on his own to a local market and buy a muffin. At the market, the manager asked him where his mom was. He said, oh, I'm doing a homework assignment about being on my own. After that, a bunch of kids started doing it. The muffin sales were up. I'll mention here that meanwhile in the Amazon jungle of Colombia, Four kids were the only ones to survive the crash of a small plane. Three adults were killed in that crash, including the kid's mother, the 13-year-old, 9-year-old, 4-year-old, and 1-year-old siblings were on their own in the jungle. You heard the story. 
frantic searches were mounted, found nothing. Forty days had passed, hope was fading, and suddenly there they were. They found them, somewhat malnourished and dehydrated, but alive. These siblings were part of an aboriginal family that knew how to live in the jungle conditions. The 13-year-old led all the way, saved not only her own life, but those of her siblings. Amazing story. Closer to home, we're thrilled that a kid can walk down the block and buy his own muffin. Over the decades in North America, since the baby boom, we started out perhaps under-parenting, then over-parenting. Hey, I'm just thinking this now. Maybe it was that instigator Harry Chapin and his rebellious rock songs that he wrote, like Cats in the Cradle. Remember 1974? Redone about 20 years later by Ugly Kid Joe, so it reached yet another generation. Is a song about a dad who has no time for his kid. When the kid grows up and dad has some time, his adult kid has no time for dad. I'm going to be like you, dad. I'm going to be like you. Maybe we all heard that song and, and we said that'll never happen to me and my kid. And then we overcompensated. Well, that's just one theory. You know, it's all Harry Chapin's fault. Anyway, now we've seemed to come full circle and many are saying that between underparenting and overparenting, there's a spot in the middle that may be much better. Free range, free play, and free time. How much free time and free play did you have? And how much does your kid have? As a young parent, I was a big fan of the teachings of Maria Montessori. Montessori schools still exist everywhere. And by the way, I'm not giving parenting advice. I made parenting mistakes. I'm sure a lot of them. But here is one of Montessori's key principles. The most important period in the development of a human is ages zero to three. Second most important, ages three till six. If you don't have your act together by age six, you are a lost cause. Well, no, I'm exaggerating to make a point. She is saying these are crucial years in the development, character, et al. of a human. As a parent or teacher, that is when you expose, develop, expose, develop, expose, develop. So that by 7, 8, 10, 13, there are periods of letting go, letting them begin to find their own paths. Of course, they're still kids. You've got to be there to guide them, you know, feed them and love them and leave them alone. But as it turns out, the greatest gift you can give your children is their independence from you. As we also used to say back in the day, even before Harry Chapin, if you love something, let it go. Helicopter parenting is harming our kids emotionally and psychologically. Teaching them stranger danger, which is an outdated concept, is actually not keeping them any safer physically. Stranger danger threat stats are actually very low. I get it, your kid is not a statistic, and you don't want them to become one. Teaching a child how and who to trust is a bigger job than teaching them not to trust anyone. But it must be done for their own sanity. I think it's the perfect time to repeat a quote I've used before on this podcast. Author Frederick Douglass, over 160 years ago, said, It is easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men. Unquote. Free range. It's not that you have to stop worrying to be a better parent. It's that you don't have to worry to be a good parent. Later That Same Life is written, voiced, and produced by Larry Fedorik. Larry Fedorik 37 at gmail.com. Subscribe to Larry's podcast YouTube channel. Get automatic notifications with each new episode. 